Good morning. Uh, for 12 years, I was a computer scientist at a large technology corporation. I used to do research in computer vision and image processing. But in the last five years, I helped this company start a new research lab in the incredible place that is India, where stark contrasts are everywhere. Um, for example, despite India's incredible economic growth, the country remains very poor. Uh, over half of the population still depends on small-scale agriculture for livelihood, and literally hundreds of millions of people still eke out survive on less than one or two US dollars per day. At the, at the lab, I started a new research group whose goal was to see whether or not we could apply electronic technologies to support the social economic development of poor countries uh, like India. Uh, many developing countries believe that technology is the key to their growth, and so increasingly they're putting PCs into schools as a way to uh, ready their uh, future workforce. Um, but with limited tax revenues, what this means is that uh, schools can't afford anything like a single PC per student, even in a computer lab. And what you find is the situation in this photograph where multiple students crowd around a single PC. Uh, we worked on a very simple technical solution to this problem where we provided every student with their own mouse. All the mice were connected into one PC. And on screen, there were multiple cursors for each mouse. So you can see some of the impact of this idea. Um, from one mouse per PC to one mouse per child. <coughs> uh, we, we ran projects just like this in education, but also in agriculture, healthcare, microfinance, uh, governance, and we used technologies ranging from PCs to mobile phones uh, to cameras to custom electronic devices. And our hope was to see whether we could put a dent in poverty by using technology. Uh, we were certainly not the only ones to think like this, and worldwide there's a growing movement called Information and Communication Technologies for Development. Um, but unfortunately, this movement has a tendency to get uh, hijacked by exaggerated rhetoric and um, ideology. So as you can see from these quotes from some people who are in this field, there's a tendency to believe that simply scaling the technology is a way to address poverty, and that, uh, that the technology itself, by itself, will actually do uh, things to solve complex social problems. Um, com uh, the fact that, uh, for just, just for example, in, com uh, in computers in schools, it turns out that um, there are studies that show that just putting a computer in a school and having students interact with it doesn't actually contribute to educational outcomes. Uh, many people say that in developing countries, uh, because teacher absenteeism is such a problem, that at least a computer is better than no teacher at all. But the accumulating research seems to suggest exactly the opposite. Uh, computers can help good schools uh, with good teachers, caring uh, administrators, and so on. But in schools which are really struggling to teach their students, uh, it turns out that computers only suck up resources and take up space. Um, uh, schools don't know how to maintain them, teachers don't know what to do with them, and administrators will often even commandeer them for their per uh, personal use. And this is a really hard lesson for a technologist like me to, uh, to, um, to see, simply because we want to see that technology has dramatic impact. Uh, but I learned this lesson over and over and over again in India, and if there were one way to summarize uh, everything that I learned in India, it would be this. Um, technology is really only a magnifier of human intent and capacity, and it's fundamentally not a substitute. So what that means is that if you have positive human intent and significant capacity, then technology can take that and multiply it and do wonders. But if you have negative intent, as in the case of, say, corrupt bureaucrats, or uh, insignificant capacity in the case of people who have been denied even a basic education, then no amount of technology makes up for those deficiencies. Uh, I'm going to ask you to try the following thought experiment as a way to um, think about this. So imagine that you and a very poor farmer somewhere were each asked to raise as much money as you could for the charity of your choice. Uh, but you were supposed to do this with a single email account. Okay, who do you think would be able to raise more money? Well, if you think about this for even a little bit, what you realize is that your literacy, your education, your organizational capacity, your ties to wealthy, influential people, all would conspire to allow you to be a lot more successful than the farmer. And since the technology is the same, the differences are entirely up to intrinsic qualities of you as a person as well as your social world. Now, this point might seem very obvious, but let me again remind you that there are people in the world who are still seduced by the false promise of technology in solving some of these very complex social problems. And it's not restricted just to the developing world. Um, these are some quotes I found, headlines, in fact, about uh, what technology can do in the developed world. And you can see things like, Twitter is changing the way we live, or that social networking is transforming uh, education. So let's put these kinds of claims to a test. 
they consider again poverty, but this time not in the developing country, but in uh, the United States of America, arguably the most technologically advanced country in the world. Um, the bottom line shows the rate of poverty in the country, and you can see until about 1970, poverty, the poverty rate declined, but since then it's held steady at somewhere between 13 and 15 percent, which is actually embarrassingly high for a rich country like the United States. So what's happened since 1970? Well, the internet was born, cell phones were invented, and major technology companies pushed their products into homes and offices everywhere. So if technology were the solution to complex problems in the social world, you would imagine that in the country that is the source of all this technology, uh, during the golden age of innovation, that technology would be able to put a little bit of a dent in a problem like poverty, but it hasn't. So the question is why not, and why do we keep believing that technology is going to save the world? Um, well, obviously there are many reasons, but I'm going to talk about one that I call the myth of scale, and it works like this. So imagine somebody who is like you and me, uh, but maybe she's bored of her job. So she says, okay, I'm going to go online, uh, submit my resume, and a few interviews later, she finds a job that is more satisfying for her. She says, I found this great new job online. Now, if you take that explanation at face value and then come across somebody who might be unemployed or maybe somebody who is doing backbreaking menial labor, you might say, well, guess what? There's this great thing called the internet, and if you, you know, send your resume out on it, you'll also be able to find a better job as well. And since there are so many people with jobs that might be uh, less than ideal, well, let's spread the technology, scale the technology, and all of a sudden, everybody will have better jobs and better lives. Uh, well, as you might guess, this doesn't actually work out in practice. And the reason is because we've misattributed cause in a very serious way. Um, going back to, again, the person, this person's like you and me. And like you and me, she has a whole lot of invisible advantages. Uh, those advantages are things like good education, um, social ties with people who are, again, relatively wealthy and successful and uh, powerful. Um, even things like the capacity to work with formal organizations in an effective way. So, yes, the Internet does help her, but if you come across somebody who doesn't have those advantages, then no amount of searching online or, um, or fiddling around with LinkedIn is actually going to help these people get through an interview or even do the job if they were to get through the interview in the first place. So where does that leave us, uh, those of us who are technologists and entrepreneurs and professionals and artists who want to contribute something for uh, people who are um, underprivileged? Well, uh, many of you have probably heard the saying, if you give a man a fish, he's for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he's for a lifetime. Uh, this is a saying that I think is, you know, ha really hits the mark. But what's really interesting about this saying is that it doesn't say anywhere that you should build a man a turbocharged, heat-seeking, robotic fishing pole. <laughs> Um, I think what's most effective is for people like us to teach and to mentor and to kind of expand our social circle to interact with people uh, that we might no normally not interact with um, so that we can share the advantages that we have with other people so that they can actually meet their own challenges on their own. Um, incidentally, those of us who are on top of the world are consuming ever more resources and polluting the earth in a faster and faster way. And our solution seems to be to build more technology to counteract what we're doing already with the technology that we have. Uh, now, if you believe what I was saying about technology magnifying human intent and capacity, then that suggests that we have to change our intent and adjust it so that we're thinking more about the future and change our capacity to learn how to be happy with a lot less material uh, stuff. Uh, for myself, um, I quit my job at the technology company so I could focus less on technology and more on contributing to human growth. I'm not really yet sure exactly what that means, but it probably means I won't be working on the next uh, new iGadget. Um, for TED fans, uh, I want to leave you with this message. Um, the T in TED used to stand for technology, but I've noticed that over the years, the events seem to be a little bit less about technology and more and more about uh, inspiring people. Um, I'm not really going to suggest this name change, but, um, but I do think that that trend is going in the right direction. Thank you very much.